insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Let me unmute that (laughs) and then say welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 41, Screen Violence. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my talented and thoughtful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. Uh, How you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing pretty good. Why don't you cozy up to your mic a little bit there? You're a little far away. There we go. That's better. There we go. So today we're going to be talking about screen violence. Um, so we'll talk about what screen violence is and, and there really isn't a cut and dry definition of it. So it's kind of a hybrid that I took from a couple different sources. Uh, then we'll talk about what the characteristics of screen violence are that affect teens. Uh, then we have some screen violence statistics. Haven't had those in a while. No, we haven't. Uh, Then we'll talk about the effects of screen violence on adolescents. And then we will talk about how to protect children from screen violence. Before we get started, I do want to kind of mention a footnote here. In doing my research uh, on this episode, uh, I found a lot of conflicting studies. So some studies say... You know, violence in teens today can be directly attributed to on-screen violence, movies, TVs, that type of thing, or video games. Then there are numerous other studies that say there's no there's no correlation between on-screen violence and teen violence, you know, in society or societal violence. Mm-hmm. So... I I don't really have any conclusions to draw from this other than to raise awareness at this point in time. I don't want to come across as preaching one side of this or the other. I just think it's worthwhile to make uh, parents and adolescents aware of these things so that you can keep an eye on them just just to make sure everything is on the up and up. Okay. So shall we get started? Yes, we shall. Okay. So I, I took kind of a couple of different definitions. One came from uh, uh, pediatrics, a pediatric site at uh, associatedpublications.org. And another came from a study that was done in 2016 that was published on CNN.com and kind of munged them together. So what I came up with is Uh, Violence in screen entertainment media, including television, film, video games, and the internet, includes acts depicting characters or players trying to physically harm other characters or players. Screen violence includes violence in video games, television shows, and movies. It is associated with aggressive behavior, aggressive thoughts, and angry feelings in children, according to a policy statement released by the American Academy of Pediatrics. So we're going to mention probably several studies during the course of the podcast today. And I encourage people to go out there and do their own research on this and and sort of draw their own conclusions. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Like I had said in the beginning, um, there wasn't enough out there for me to come down on one side or the other. So that's the definition that we're working with. Do you kind of understand where we're coming from when we say screen violence? Yep. Are you exposed to screen violence yourself? Um, in some ways, yes. Could you elaborate? Yeah. Um, so you and me play this one game, and I'm pretty sure most people in the audience have probably heard about it, Call of Duty. Right. And 
It's basically a game where you fight against other, against non-player characters or player characters if you're online during the game. And it's basically about a war zone and... I can definitely concur that that's definitely on-screen violence because it includes so se- it includes several um, ways of violence, inclu- along with basically showing blood on your screen whenever right. you kill someone or when you are shot. Right, and the version of Call of Duty that we play, there's several different flavors of the game. Yeah. Uh, The one that we seem to play the most often is... is, um, Infinite Warfare. Infinite Warfare, right. And in in the way that we do it, it, the game by its very definition is violent. Yeah. Um, You're shooting things, you're blowing things up, you're stabbing things. Yeah, I mean, like, I remember we would call you... We would call me Rambo because I would never stop spamming the trigger. Right. And we would used to call you Stabby McStabpants because you had a knife and you would stab people and you always liked doing that. Now, let me ask you a, a, a question regarding that. Have you ever seen a Rambo movie? No, but I do know the game. For, I do know the one game from uh, Dave and Buster's. I, I'm... I pass by it sometimes, and I notice it says Rambo, and it's basically about a guy shooting a bunch of stuff, I think. Right. Rambo was a very violent film franchise that came out in the 80s um, that was very graphic in its portrayal of violence. Um, But you've never seen the movie itself, so you've never seen that level of violence. You've never played the game at Dave & Buster's. I haven't even played the game at at Dave & Buster's. Um, So... It's a reference that I'm aware of that you're vaguely aware of based on that limited exposure. Yeah. So so you are exposed to screen violence, at least as far as that game is concerned. And and I'm pretty sure you're exposed to it via television and movies, too, because you just can't get away from it these days. Yeah. Now, having that exposure, do you feel that it causes violent tendencies in you? Um, are you violent? Not unless I have my mood swings. Then I kind of get a little more. When I basically, whenever I get angry, I sort of get violent. I remember whenever I would have my mood swings, I would sometimes just throw a squishy at the wall. Okay, so describe what violent is to you. Well, for me, violence is either is um, acting in a certain way that can cause harm to others, yourself, or op- or any object. Okay, so are you harming other people? I mean, I don't harm other people. I definitely try not to harm other people. Do you harm yourself? Mm, no, I don't harm myself. Do you harm animals? Well, I don't harm animals, but I could definitely say I can harm the objects because I just continue just throwing it. Do you consider yourself a violent person? Not really. I mean, even when I get, like, angry now, I just try to, like, go away from society and just, like, calm myself. Okay. So then the on-screen violence you're exposed to sounds like it's probably not a problem. Yeah, I mean, I've never I've never been a violent person. I've never, like, been a type of person who says, like, we have to settle this after school, like, on a fight or something. I've never been that kind of person. Now, besides the mediums that we've talked about so far, are there any other examples of screen violence that you can think of um, that you're exposed to? Uh, let's see. I guess in some of the TV shows I might watch. Okay. And that's pretty typical. Like I said, you know, it's it's hard not to have some level of violence on TV these days. Yeah. So. I can't really (laughs) give a specific example for which TV show, but I do know in, like, some TV shows there's always, like, explosives or, like, in really old cartoons there's, like, explosive explosions and people can fall off cliffs as they look down and... It's amazing how violent some of the old classic cartoons are, yeah. Yeah, and, like, they have pretty dark tones to them, too. (coughs) Some of them are pretty dark tones to it, too. All right, so I think we pretty pretty much have a good idea of what we're talking about when we say screen violence, then. Yeah. So let's talk about, when we come back, the characteristics of screen violence that affect teens. (laughs) 
So the research for this came from a website called medialit.org, uh, and they talk about six types of screen violence and how children respond. And these are vague definitions of, of characteristics of these types of violence. So the first one they talk about is reward for violence. If a violent act is re uh, rewarded or left unpunished, uh, it is more likely to foster attitudes supportive of aggression. The lack of punishment actually functions as a sanction or reward for violent behavior. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I couldn't fully understand it. Could you... So, like in a video game, if you shoot a player... Um, in order for you to win a game, you have to shoot so many players. That's a reward for violence. Okay. Do you find that type of reward system, that type of violence system, makes you more aggressive, aggressive either in-game or in real life? Well, I'm pretty sure in-game it's definitely going to make me more more prone to violence because that's the whole point of the game. But in real life, I've never really had that problem. I mean, I know I don't. I know it's not real, and I always have that in the back of my mind, and I only do it for fun, really. And I really just don't really have it for real life. Okay. So the next next example that we have is reality of violence. The more a violent act is realistically portrayed, the more likely it is to be imitated. Older children are more emotionally responsive to programs that depict realistic events and are influenced more by violent movies that feature events that are humanly possible. So the question here is, if what you see is more typical of the type of violence that happens in real life and less indicative of cartoonish style violence... Um, think, uh, Wile E. Coyote. Okay. Wile E. Coyote going after the road runner. He uses, you know, Explosion. explosions, explosions in this ridiculously sized rocket to try and, and mm -hmm. get him. Is that, are you more responsive to that? Or are you more responsive to in-game video violence where you pull a trigger on a controller, it shoots a gun you see someone get hit with a bullet and there's blood where it's kind of realistic. Um, I can definitely say like in cartoons you wouldn't real you don't really know that it's real. You know it can't be real because it's like this huge oversized rocket and you know no one can really pull that off unless like you live in a cartoon. But in real life and like seeing how that can actually be possible, e even though Call of Duty is like complete, like the one we normally play is like totally in the future and like some of the stuff doesn't even exist. Um, I've not really been prone to thinking of violence and shooting a gun. I'm more like if I'm thinking of movies and watching movies, like sometimes the Avengers have certain um, violence scenes and I've just. And I haven't been, like, responsive of wanting to do that violence. I've more been terrified of that. Okay. It's more fear than wanting to That's That's a very violence. good point. So the next example that they give us is violent role models. Children are more likely to imitate and look up to characters who you, whose use of violence is portrayed as necessary or attractive. Moreover, children who strongly identify with a violent media character are more likely to be aggressive themselves. Avengers is an excellent example here. So you look at things like Thor or Captain America, and these are hero figures in society that we are meant to look up to because of their heroic acts, but their heroic acts... Um, are by their nature violent. Um, does that tend to have an influence over how you look at violence when you see heroic figures using violence? I mean, I've never really thought of it like that. I can definitely say it would not motivate me to be um to be um 
violent because I've learned that not all, all superheroes. <laughs> not all superheroes wear capes. Like you can be like, I know how to. I learned how you can be a superhero without being violent or having superpowers or stuff like that. But I can definitely see, like, someone who's a huge fan of the Avengers could be, like, who didn't know what a real... who didn't know what makes a real hero unless they saw the Avengers. And I think since they can't really have the superpowers, they would probably think, like, the violence part would be the best part to become that superhero if they're really obsessed with it or just completely insane. Okay. Okay, I can see that. That kind of um, segues us into the next example they have, and that is justified violence. The more of an act of violence is presented as justified, the more likely it is to be copied. Young children are more apt to hurt than to help appear after watching our cartoon with scenes of justified violence. So when you see a situation in a cartoon, we'll say, where... Somebody does something and they get hit for it and it's portrayed as a justified version of violence. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I can definitely see like if someone in real life was to do something like the cartoon and someone had watched the cartoon, they would probably react they might react the same way. I definitely know I've never done that because I'm not that violent. Okay. The next one they talk about here is violent connections. Viewers who find similarity between themselves and their actions and feelings in a violent act, a theme or a character in a film are more likely to imitate or emulate that violence in real life. This is particularly true of children. So for an example here, let's talk about you watch a movie and the movie portrays a child who is being picked on by a bully. Again, we can go to Captain America here. So in the first Captain America film, um, there's someone who's in a movie theater and he's being rude, obnoxious and disrespectful. And Steve Rogers, before he becomes Captain America, decides that he's going to stick up for everyone else in the theater and he's going to call this guy out. So the guy takes him out in the alley and starts to beat him up at that point in time until Roger's, you know, friend finally shows up and teaches the guy a lesson through violence. Um, so that could, a lot of kids can identify with the fact that they get picked on as kids and, you know, they're waiting for someone to step in or even, for themselves to muster the carriage to finally fight back. Do you find that type of violent connection uh, to have any kind of weight with you or any kind of justification with you where you could see yourself being violent in a situation like that? I mean, I've never wanted to take a violent turn, but I can definitely see some other kids would, like, take a violent turn and try to, like, teach bullies a lesson. Like, no one likes bullies. Like, absolutely no one. And... And there are different ways to deal with them. As we talked about in our One Bullying podcast, there are different ways to deal with bullies. The worst way, I'm pretty sure, is with violence. But unfortunately, with on-screen violence and all that, and online violence, it can probably have an impact on how people treat bully, how other people would like to treat bullies. I can definitely say, instead of wanting to fight back, I would instead use words like... Like, I'd step in and try to stop it, but I'm pretty sure the kid would try to beat me up as well. And I would just use self-defense techniques. Like, I'll try to block their fists. Like, that's the only kind of violence I'm really going to get. I'm not going to try to cause the other person harm right. unless they're trying to cause me harm. I'll just try to block them okay. as best I can. And I'm pretty sure other kids probably won't do them. They'll basically beat up the bully. And to be honest, in school, if you actually do that, you... Both of you could actually end up in punishment, even though you tried to help the other kid. Right. That's why I don't really take too violent, because in real life, you can actually be punished. Like in the first time, like, well, like we said earlier, you actually get rewarded in video games, and that can actually lead to you thinking you might get rewarded for, like, beating up a bully. Like, you can imagine, like, 
um, if you beat up a bully, you could get reward. You could get like rewarded as a hero or something. That in real life is not true because right, that's not how things work. Yeah, that's not how things work in real life, and I think that's the major problem. Kids think kids mix up fantasy with reality, and that uh, and that just ends up in pro with problems and conflicts. That's a very good point. And that brings us to <clears throat> the last example that they have here. And I think this one tends to be uh, the one that that a lot of people get uh, a lot of people tend to focus on, and that is the amount of violence. So excessive exposure to media violence may produce a psychological blunting of normal emotional responses to violent events. It may also lead to a lack of responsiveness to real life aggression. So what they're saying here is the more violence you're exposed to, the less egregious violence seems to you. Um, almost like you build a tolerance to it. Like if you see violence, you know, people watch the news all the time and there's constantly negative news. There's violence. There's, there's attacks. There's all kinds of different things. And people tend to get desensitized when they watch that level of violence. So you turn on the next day, you're like, oh, okay, well, let's see, you know, who was attacked today. And you're not as outraged by it when you're exposed to it. And uh, the concern that people have here is that you'll see it on the street and you'll just walk past it and, and you know, you'll just think it's regular part of life. How do you think the amount of violence has an effect on us? Um, I can definitely say the effect of violence can definitely have a big impact on what we think. Like, um, people who are exposed to it a lot, I can definitely say, will eventually become numb to it. Like, if you keep eating the same food over and over and over again, or you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you you get used to seeing it. Your body adapts to it and just knows it's regular knowing that there's so much on-screen violence you just get a prone to it and you don't really fear it right and the thing is if you fear it it it's less likely to happen if you don't real if you lose that fear over time it just shows that you really don't care about about the negative effects on violence that's a very good point and i think that's what a lot of people's concern on is on that topic so we'll come back and we'll talk about the effects of screen violence I'm sorry, we'll talk about the statistics yeah. when we come back. Don't skip all the statistics. I don't want to skip the statistics. I know we love statistics. Yep. So this study comes from the National Institutes of Health, uh, .gov, and uh, it's sponsored by the National uh, Library of Medicine and National Institutes of Health, and it comes from June of 2009. So it's kind of old, but I think it's still relative. The numbers may be a little bit different. So a couple of interesting things that came out of this study was children in the United States spend an average of between three and four hours per day viewing television. Um, and they didn't get into details about the type of television other than to talk about the fact that there's a lot of violence on there. So... Three or four hours a day. Do you? How much time do you spend watching television today? I mean, honestly, I don't. I'm not really on television that much. I'm more on YouTube and like mobile games. But I do watch TV when I go to when um during night during the night to help me fall asleep. Okay, good point. But but even if when I don't watch, like when I when I like do uh, like when i play certain games like that that can have a certain level of violence in it right and we'll we'll get into that in a minute but the study goes on to say that um over 60% of programs contain some form of violence and about 40% of those on television contain heavy violence so the concern that they have that where they're kind of drawing the parallel here is that three or four hours of day viewing television with the assumption that 60% of that time or more than two hours a day, you're seeing violent things on television. So they're, they're kind of pointing out that we've got a, a problem with violence. 
They also go on to say that children are spending an increasingly large amount of time playing video games, most of which contain violence. So tell me about the video games that you play. Are they violent video games? What's the nature? What type of video game are they? What medium do you play them on? Give us some background. All righty. So I'll, I, right now I can think of at least three examples. So the first one is one of um, the ones I play most often, and I'm... And it's less of a video game, more of a mobile app called Gasha Life. It's basically where you can create your own characters and have different scenes. Now, some people I've watched on YouTube, um, like the, you can make, like people make YouTube videos on them and post them on the internet. And sometimes they include a bit of violence, like if the main character is being bullied and okay. and like and. Like, the main character is, like, getting black eyes because of it. Or, like... So even in something just, that's relatively innocent and creative, like Gosha Life, there there can be violence interjected into it. Yeah, like, um, I actually, like, know some of the, um... They actually have, like, you can hold items... And some of the items are, like, guns, knives, and that kind of stuff. Like, even in something that seems so innocent where you can just create your own character, it can also include some type of violence. Okay. Well, continuing the video game theme, they say the video game units are now present in 83% of homes with children. And they don't go into specifics, but we're talking consoles, handheld mobile games and so forth yeah and speak and on that note um the second one i know about um the second one that i play is minecraft and even though minecraft is ba like minecraft is also seems like an innocent game it's like you just build houses but there are certain elements where they include violence like there are mobs you can kill there are there are weapons you you there's there's weapons you use to kill mobs, and there's also player versus player where you kill other players. Well, and I know I know Minecraft itself is inherently violent because there are objectives that are violence based objectives in the game. Yeah. Even if you go into survival mode, it's it's survival mode. So there's a an element of violence just associated with that type of mode. Yeah, and even in creative mode, like most people in creative mode like to go to the end and defeat the Ender Dragon, and that's also a version of violence. Most people don't think that. It's just like they think it's just a way of playing the game, and yes, it is, but that's a, also a version of violence. Like you're literally trying to kill a dragon. Right. And though it might not seem that bad, and Honestly, it's it doesn't have that bad of um it doesn't have that bad of violence. There's no blood and every time you hit them it's more like you just like they just turn red for a minute and jump and then right, when they but die. Violence they turn is into violence. Dust. And, I know. And I think that kind of violence probably is is more dangerous because it's it's it seems so innocent. Right. It's watering down the violence. So you can go up to someone and hit them with a sword. They turn red and say, ow. Well, if you do that in real life, that's not the effect that you're going to get. I know. Like, people, and, like, you basically are going to chop them up. Right. And it's that sort of desensitization, I think, that a lot of people are concerned about. Yeah, I can actually see that. So, in 2004, children spent roughly 49 minutes per day playing video games. And on any given day... 52% of children ages 8 to 18 were playing video games. Now, that's 15 years ago. So I have to imagine those numbers are significantly higher now. There's a lot more video game play going on now. Yeah, like there's, there's like huge matches with video games now. And like there's so many Let's Plays, you can't even count them. Right. Uh, video game use peaks during middle childhood with an average of 65 minutes per day for 8 to 10 year olds and declines to 33 minutes per day for 15 to 18 year olds. How much time per day do you think you spend playing video games now? Honestly, most of my time is used up by YouTube now, but I do um, play video games and to be honest... 
I really don't know how long I really play video games. I know you and me play Call of Duty, and um, we normally play that for like 40 minutes to an hour at least. Right. I think. Um, and for Gosh Life, I like don't even know how long I spend on it. I switch from Gosh Life to YouTube occasionally, and I mean I'm on YouTube more than I am with Gosh Life, but still. They go on to say that 94% of games rated by the video game industry as appropriate for teens are described as containing violence and ratings, but independent researchers suggest that the real percentage may be even higher. I don't know how you get much higher than 94%. Yeah. Um, <coughs> how many, how many games are you exposed to that are not violent? Let me ask that question. That might be easier to list. Hmm. It's a little weird, because, like, there are other mobile games I play. Like, remember our one Apple game, What the Golf? Right. Um, Even though it it's like, doesn't really involve too much violence, there's still, like, you, in some of them you move a guy or an animal, and that's... I don't know if that's really violent, though. Is it? Uh, I guess if you're hitting someone or something or causing pain. I mean, no one's really hitting it. Well, then that's probably not... Not too violent. Yeah, so that's one of the games that's not really that violent. There's also, like, those word game puzzles. Like, those are, the, I think, the primary ones that don't include violence. I, th I would agree with that. So I, I think, you know, the general idea here is that most entertainment that we get from video games tends to be tends to contain some kind of violence. I know. Like, there's actually this one app I like to play called Talking Tom, and, like... Even though it seems innocent, it still includes violence. It can can hit his stomach, hit his head, n knock him down, pull his tail. Right, and the kind of violence you're doing there really is, I mean, uh, that's animal cruelty is what yeah. it's promoting there. So there's all different kinds of, of violence that we have to be aware of. Yeah. So we'll come back and we'll talk about the effects of screen violence on adolescents. So the National Institutes of Mental Health have identified uh, the following major effects of seeing violence on television. Children may become less sensitive to the pain and suffering of others. Um, have you had any effect on the violence that you've been exposed to on, on your empathy towards other people? Um, no, not actually, not really. I mean, if I see someone's hurt, I always try to go and help them. I can definitely say, like, in video games, I definitely really don't care if the guy dies. But, like, in real life, it's, like, a major thing for me. Okay. They also say that children may be more fearful of the world around them. Do you find yourself living in fear and having that fear promoted by violence on screen? some ways, yes. I mean, like, in Call of Duty, like, imagine if there's just a guy that comes out and just shoots. Like, that in real life is terrifying, and knowing that that can actually happen, because Call of Duty is a sort of realistic game, like, knowing that can actually happen is terrifying, and I can Well, least, knowing that actually happens in, in real, life, in is real also, life with mass shootings is terrifying, too. Yeah. But again... Seeing that in a news broadcast is still considered on-screen violence. Yeah. They say children may be more likely to behave in aggressive or harmful, harmful ways towards other. Do you find yourself feeling more aggressive after seeing on-screen violence? No, I really don't um, have too much of an aggressive tone. I'm a quite calm person, but I'm pretty sure others probably say different. Okay. This next one we've already touched on. They say children become immune or numb to the horror of violence. I can definitely say I've not done that because I'm still afraid of violence. Um, and I definitely don't resort to violence if, if um, I'm able to. Okay. They say children begin to accept violence as a way to solve problems. Have you ever felt that way? No, I'm pretty sure other kids who are like bullies can definitely say that. Um, for me, I've definitely not tried, I've definitely not resorted to violence, even during my moody phase, I've never really resorted to violence as solving problems, I just resorted to screaming, now I'm like, 
I just go to a corner and just think about it, calm myself down. And if someone's annoying me, I just resort to ignoring them. Okay. Children imitate the violence they observe on television. Not really. I Not don't. Not so much? I don't really do violence. And the last one that they talk about here is children identify with certain characters, victims, and or victimizers when they see violence on screen. Um, I can, like, if I'm ever seeing, like, a kid being bullied, um, on, when I'm on, when I watch, when I watch things, I can definitely, I definitely sometimes feel like them because the kids are sometimes the last people to get picked for a sports game, and that's me. I only really, I don't really relate in the violent ways, I just relate in the fact that I get, I don't real. I'm not, I'm, I remember in, um, Sixth grade, I can definitely concur that I felt like I was being one of those kids because I felt completely invisible. And so, so let me ask you, you know, knowing all with all these effects and, and what we've learned so far on screen violence, do you feel as though the violence that you're exposed to through video games, television, movies, or whatever, you feel it has any kind of lasting effect on you and your actions or your attitude? Um... Hmm. Uh, I just know that, like, um, I don't really think there's too many effects that it's had on me. I definitely know I don't resort to violence whenever there's a problem. Um, and I think the fact that I see how violence can affect others during, on, when I'm on, when there's on screen, when I'm exposed to on screen violence, I definitely think that's how I sort of help to avoid it. And I think it's had the complete opposite effect that most people think it has on kids. How about your, your friends at school or the kids that you see at school? Do you see them affected at all? Do you see them being violent at all? And do you think that there, that violence might come from on-screen violence? I honestly don't see too much violence at school, um, which is a good thing. I mean, actually, at my old school... I remember there was actually this one big event at the very end of the year where it's like there were these two kids who had a huge fight. And, like, I had no... I I didn't really know too much about it. But I don't think it was from on-screen violence. It could have been, but, like... It could have been the fact that the two kids just didn't like each other. And I don't know the whole story about it, but I just know they got into a pretty big fight. Well, how about... um Let's think of it in terms of aggressiveness. Like you've mentioned a number of times how uh, kids in in gym class tend to be very competitive and aggressive. Uh, Do you think that might stem from, you know, the effect that on-screen violence has on society? Um, I mean, it could be. Like, um, I know they don't resort to, like, fist fights. Okay. That beeping. I don't know. You want to let the cat out? Uh, sure. I'll be right back. Sounds like a bomb. It's not. It's fine. Don't worry. So it sounds like from from everything that we've talked about here that you're really not that affected by uh, on screen violence, which is a good thing. And I mean, the last thing that we want is is for you to to try to engage in recreational activity and have it have a negative effect on you. Um, But it's also good to hear that you're really not exposed to a lot of violence at school either. So there's not a lot of problems that we have to worry about. Yeah. I mean, the only real type of violence that I can think of is just like, I mean, it's like joking violence. It's like kids like push against others or like it like, and, like, the kids are laughing about it. Like, they're joking around. Like, they push um, others around. And right. that's, like, the only real violence I can think of. Um, I'm pretty sure it's some type of violence. I don't really know what type it is. Okay. So. All right. Well, we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, briefly how we can protect our children from screen violence. Alrighty. So they, this came from a couple of different sources. Um, so it's just sort of a combined list of 
suggestions on how to how to help kids out. Okay. So the first one they talk about is pay attention to the programs your children are watching and watch some of them with them. Um, and this is one of those things where I think mommy and daddy kind of need to be a little bit better at, at, at seeing some of the things that you're watching on YouTube. Um, you know, you watch stuff up in your room and we're not always there. When you would watch stuff down in the kitchen when, the, when we had the TV down there, we were, you know, it was a lot easier for us to sort of monitor that type of thing. Um, but a lot of times, you know, especially when you're talking about YouTube, where YouTube is the type of thing where they kind of suck you in when you watch one. You, you may go look something up on YouTube and then you get 50 suggestions and you start clicking through and watching different things. Yeah, I'm a victim of that. And you can very quickly move from what you were looking for to something completely different. And some of that can be violent content. I mean, the most I really do on YouTube is listen to music, watch certain gosh life videos, and um, just watch funny um, funny things that people do. Like, I watch Vines and stuff like that. That's main the main content I actually watch. Yeah, and I don't think... I don't think you're really, I'm, I'm not overly concerned about you, but for parents in general, just sort yeah. of be aware of what your kids are watching and, and watch stuff with them. Yeah. Uh, the other thing they say is set limits on the amount of time they spend with the television uh, and, you know, we'll say video games and internet and everything. Uh, consider removing the TV set from the child's bedroom. We've talked about that, but for other reasons where you were having trouble sleeping. Yeah. I don't think we're to that point now, yeah. but again, it's a, it's a matter of, of regulating the exposure and, uh, monitoring it, mm -hmm. uh, point out that although the actor has not actually been hurt or killed, such violence in real life results in pain and death. So when you walk up to someone and you whack them with a sword, it may not hurt them in Minecraft, but that's going to leave a mark in the real life. Yeah. Right. So it's important to be able to distinguish between real and fake violence. Yeah. Um, refuse to let children see shows known to be violent and change the channel or turn off the TV set when offensive material comes on with an explanation of what is wrong with the program. Honestly, I don't like watching zombies with you guys. I definitely don't watch any of the uh, TV shows you guys watch. I'm the, the most TV... I mean, I mainly just watch kids' TV shows. My favorite one is SpongeBob, and honestly, there's not much violence in there. Right. Well, and I wouldn't want you watching Walking Dead anyway because yeah. it is a very violent show. And to be honest, I really don't like the like the thing is I have a problem with blood and gore, and I definitely think that stopped me from watching most violent things. I mean, yeah, I watch the Avengers, but like. I've def like that's the only real well, and that's most cartoon violent violence that they they depict in there. Like, yeah, nobody's shooting lightning out of a hammer in real life. Yeah. So you kind of, you know, no one's shooting repulsor beams out of their hands. No one's throwing a magic shield that defies physics in yeah. real life. So that's to me cartoon violence. Yeah. They go on to say uh, disapprove of the violent episodes in front of the children. Stressing the belief that such behavior is not the best way to handle a problem. Now, I'll be the first one to say, as a youth, I'll say, I was very violent. Uh, and that was because the, the upbringing I had, my father tended to solve things with his fists. And when that's your role model, you kind of follow that lead. And I wound up getting in trouble a lot. I used to get in the fights a lot when I was in high school. Uh, in grade school, I was the type of person who my father was a bully and I tried to be the exact opposite. So as a result, I would, uh, stick up for the kids who the bullies would bully. I would bully the bullies is what I used to say. Ah. Um, and that's not the way to do it. There's a better way to do it. And to be honest, in a way you actually turned into your father. What do you, well, yeah, just by acting through violence. You're right. So it's important for parents to disapprove, to show disapproval of, of such acts. Honestly, I think I show the disapproval myself. Like, as we talked about, as I talked about earlier, I really know solving problems with your fists is not a good thing to do. Right. I mean, I'm, I mainly do it. 
I've learned how to do it through just words. I've never really thought of actually doing violence because that can that that can cause more problems than solve. Well, and you're absolutely right. And you know, over the years, that's what I learned how to do was to take that passion and that aggression and that um, desire for justice, we'll say, uh, and, and turn it from a physical act to pouring it, an outpouring of words through emails or pamphlets or whatever. And that's been far more effective than raising, you know, a fist at someone. I know. And like what I learned, instead of showing my anger on others, even though I never really got violent, I just screamed at others. I learned to take my violence on objects. Well, my anger, right. not violence. And eventually I stopped even doing that and just going somewhere away from society or away from others and just calming myself. And that's a therapeutic approach. And the last thing, last hint that they have here is help with peer pressure among friends and classmates by contacting other parents and agreeing to enforce similar rules about the length of time and type of program the children may watch. And this is sort of an outreach to other children's parents. You know, it's, they say it takes a village to raise a child and, and to a large extent it does because your kids interact with so many other kids during their life. And if the parents themselves can communicate and keep other parents aware of where these problems are, you're going to find, even though you run into parents who are very defensive of their kids and think that their kids can do no wrong, um, you will find the vast majority of parents tend to be receptive to any kind of input like this that you would have. Um, and it helps everyone in the long run to keep everybody informed. And that was all we had. Uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll get your closing remarks and any shout outs you might have. And we'll go from there. Okay. Go for closing remarks. Alrighty. So no matter who you are out in the audience, I'm pretty sure you've been exposed to um, online, internet, video games, TV shows, all that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty sure if you've been exposed to that, you've been exposed to on-screen violence. And it's important to note that on-screen violence is a totally different thing from real violence. As we said before, Minecraft and real life have a totally different view on violence. You can hit someone with a sword, they just turn around and say, ow. You hit someone with a sword in real life, it's going to end in way worse conditions. So it's important to know the fake violence and the real violence. And I think that's the best way to stop you from think from um, having violence in thinking of violence in any other way in real life. And it's also important to note that solving problems with violence will 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 cause more problems than solve problems. And I think with those two notes, you'll be perfectly fine, and it'll help you from thinking of taking violence into your life more often. Okay. Well said. Uh, any shout-outs? Mm, I don't really think so. No, not this week. Not just this week. not feeling it. I just don't really know who to give a shout-out to. Do you have anyone? No, I don't have anyone either. I'm not feeling it either. Uh, so that's it for this week. Um, just a reminder, you can uh, reach out to us via email at comments at insightsintothings.com. It's not listed on I your know, lower third. I know, I know. You know, the lower third is the generic one here. Okay, sheesh. Uh, if I did this, then they would get your email address on your lower third there. Mm. Um, anyway, so you can reach us on our website at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on YouTube at Insights into Things. You're really not very good at this, are you? I know. I'm not. I at don't YouTube. have the com lyrics. Slash YouTube. Insights into Things. You can get us on Twitter mm. at Insights underscore Things. You can get us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Insights into Things podcast. Uh, you get us 
on audio uh, podcast at uh, podcast.insightsintoteens.com. Uh, and on Twitch, we're streaming live on Twitch tonight. You can get us at twitch.tv slash insights into things. And I think that's everything. Oh, yeah. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts. And what are they? Um, insights and Entertainment, where it's featuring you and mommy. And our newest podcast, our monthly podcast called Insights into Tomorrow, featuring my father and my brother. Very good. Uh, and that's it. We are done. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.